Hi, welcome to listen to a lab lecture. This now we're going to talk about one of the very popular model from a lab filtration ecosystems, which is the Halo Laboratory Air Filtration Systems, a ceiling mounted filtration systems. It is designed to work 24 seven nonstop to remove fugitive emissions or VOCs or the odors from your laboratory. It's equipped with a laboratory grade filtration carbon filters. Earlap claimed that the Neutrodyne technology can have a longer shelf life, basically double the capacities for the normal carbon filters. Uh, Halo is low cost because it's not linked to HVAC, there's no dark work required. It's very low energy consumptions, just 50 watts. It is actually lower than the lamp that you use in your house. It is easy to set up and simple operations. There are four types of Halo uh, systems. Uh, it is different in terms of the carbon that they use and also the detection system uh, used in this system. The first model is for VOCs to remove VOC from the room. It has the VOC detectors and the carbon filters that are designed to absorb VOC. The second is what we call CAMPLUS. It's meant to be used in a room that is uh, contaminated with solvents. The filters is optimized for solvent uh, remover. The third model is for acids, vapors. Uh, sensors and the filters are designed to remove acids as a primary and solvent as a secondary. The last one is for hospitals and for museums to remove formaldehyde to constantly absorb and remove the formaldehyde. So what Halo Laboratory Air Filtration is not? It is not a clean room authorized HEPA filters modules. Even though the, from the appearance it looks more or less the same, but the principal mechanism are different. So HEPA filter modules basically uh, produce clean air. It is used for in the ISO 5 class uh, crane room. Whereas Halo laboratory air filtration systems is not generating positive airflows. It's basically suck the air from the room filters and return the air back to the room. Halo laboratory air filtration system is also not a HVAC system and it is not a ducted air chain systems. You can see these ducted air chain systems basically to improve the air change in the factories. So Halo laboratory air filtration systems have at least four main functions. Number one, it improves the air change rate in the laboratory. Number two, it absorbs, filter, and then remove the chemical vapors from the air. Number three, it provides alerts to users uh, when it detected uh, the fugitive chemicals emissions present in the room. Number four, to provide seamless, smart, and continuous supply of purified air into your laboratory. Let us examine this function one by one. First, to improve air change rate in the laboratory, as you can see from these international standards, the OSHA, OSHA, and NFPA, the recommended air change for any laboratories is at least four up to 12 air change per hour. So how do we calculate air change rate? So you can calculate the air change rate um, by getting these information, the Q, divide by the V. The Q stands for process A flow, where you can get from the specifications of the Halo systems. Um, it's specified that the fan can process up to 220 cubic meters per hour of airflow. Then we obtain the volume of the room. A lab claimed that one Halo is optimized for a room areas of 20 square meters or a volume of 60 cubic meters. Let's say we have a room of 20 square meters and the typical laboratory height is around 2.5 meters to 3 meters. If you multiply 20 square meters with 
2.5 or even 3 meters so you can get a room volume of 50 to 60 cubic meters. So let us calculate the A change per hour. So the Q here is 220 cubic meters per hour divided by a typical room volume of 20 square meters multiplied by 2.7 uh, meter height you can get around 55 cubic meters. So 220 divided by 55, it will be 4A change per hour. That is how we calculate the A change rate. One thing we need to emphasize here, Halo air filtration system is designed as a secondary containment. Uh, the emphasis still go to a primary containment. Example for primary containment is film hood, and the chemical storage cabinet because the vapors is generated inside this hood. Halo is designed for secondary containment when there is a release of escape of these vapors into the room. Halo will be used to further remove these odors or VOCs. This is a typical example of where Halo has been used uh, in the laboratory. You will see there's a primary containment, the film hoods, and halo serve as a secondary containment to further remove the vapors from the room. So the room has a better air qualities and the people working inside are more comfortable. Number two, to absorb, filter, and then remove the chemical vapors from the laboratory air. So the typical halos are equipped with uh, these features. We'll go from the upper right, the air outlet of the purified air. So the purified the air being filtered by the carbon filters will be released from this air outlet. And then you will see a chemical sensors. Each unit come with chemical sensors. If you have a VOC filters, then it will equip with a VOC chemical sensors. If you have a formaldehyde, carbon filters, then you will have a formaldehyde sensors together in, uh, in your halo. Then the air is sucking in from the air inlets with a pre-filters. Then above the pre-filters, you will have a 10 kilos of neutrodyne carbon filters to remove and absorb uh, filtered the vapors. And following with the halo alert LED lights. So when the room air qualities are okay, the halo light will be constant. Once it detected the fugitive emissions, so this LED light will start to blink to alert the user that there is a presence of vapors or chemicals in the room. Lastly, above the ceilings, there will be routers, wiring, mounting bracket and sockets. So here is how the air been sucking into the halo systems and then the purified air will be released back to the room. So it's four A change per hour. So the following video shows how the carbon filters works. I think we have to differentiate HEPA filters with the carbon filters. HEPA filters are used to filter off powders. The typical size for powders is uh, 1 micron to 3 micron and above. But carbon filters are dealing with molecular gas vapors. So it's dealing with 10 nanometers to 1 nanometer size of uh, gas uh, molecules. Early lab neutrogen carbon filters are optimized with the uh, highest uh, affinities the active surface areas of over 1,000 square meters per one gram. Number three, to provide alerts to users when detected the fugitive chemicals emissions. So the typical halos will function as follows. So the fan will constantly run at one speed at the normal room conditions where the, uh, the air qualities are below the threshold limits. The sensors constantly monitor the room air qualities. So when the sensor detected 
the fugitive emissions and exceeded the threshold limits, what will happen is the fan speed will ramp up up to six, uh, 2,600 to 2,800 RPM to increase the A change rate to remove the fugitive emission as quickly as possible. Then what happened? The hollow LED will be triggered and it will start to blink. So the user will be alert and know that the fugitive emissions uh, happened in the room. So the software will, will show and display the air quality via handphone or via your laptop. Um, this is typical how it looks like uh, when the hollow detected the fugitive emissions that exceeded the threshold limits. They will start to blink. And you can hear the, the fan's noise is uh, louder because it start to ramp up to a higher speed. Number four, to provide seamless, smart and continuous supply of purified air into your laboratory. So it's, it's seamless and smart because each hollow systems come with the software where you can use to monitor the room air qualities. So to ensure that the, the air is constantly supplied with the purified air. This is basically the interface of the software that you can access through your smartphone or to the laptop. So it will provide information about the air qualities, the threshold, the current uh, level of the air qualities, the fan speed and um, how far the fan is running, the hollow usage times, how long you have implemented hollow in the laboratory, the filter conditions and then when is the time to change the filters. And you can also get all the events um, recorded in this software. So you have traceability. So when you on, when you off, when there's issue of fans, when there's detections of emissions are all recorded inside this software. This is our case studies. The hollow filtering systems we install in University Technology Petronas. So they have uh, GCMS rooms equipped with five GCMS. Um, the GCMS constantly emit chemical vapors into the room, and the air condition system that they use is basically a split aircon. Uh, as you know, split aircon do not introduce outside air into the room. Therefore, there's no A change in the room. Hence, hollow systems have been uh, proposed uh, to be used in the room. So the room size is around 80 to 100 square meters. Therefore, we recommended four units of hollow to increase the A change rate in the room to at least four or more A change per hour. This is how it looks like after the installations. The customers are delighted because after the installations, the air qualities of the room improve. Any fugitive emissions will be removed less than 20 minutes. And the customers can constantly monitor the air quality of the room. They can access through their smartphone even before they enter the room. So they can protect themselves from these fugitive emissions. To maintain the halo is uh, very easy. The filters can last for at least two years. So the re filter replacement can be done easily, like uh, shows in these photos. You can get more information about halo system from our website. And our website is www.tms-lab.com. Thank you. Thank you for your attentions.